Right. So thank you very much for uh, the introduction there, Vineet. And um, I'm Neil Kang. You can call me Neil. I'm one of the consultants at Cambridge Orthopaedics and I love my job. And I really hope that in the uh, short time that we have together today, that you will love orthopedics as well. Uh, I'll try and introduce you to why I like my, uh, my job. So th these two x-rays aren't matched by the way, but um, I was a budding pediatrician um, and I, my first job was in a small district general hospital in South London and uh, after graduating from King's College and uh, I was going to um, be a pediatrician, first job, general surgery, I didn't really enjoy it, but next job was uh, in uh, orthopaedics and got invited into theatres and asked, do you want to use this Black & Decker drill? And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, fixed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it was, Kate. I saw your eyes. <laughs> you know, it didn't say no. It didn't really say uh, black and decker drill. But you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, embraced and engaged, and uh, and and that's how you. If you come to our theatres, that's exactly what you'll find. I'm, I'm sure that Vineet, Vineet's nodding in the, uh, approval there as well, um, and Daphne and and Than and all the others. You, you know, we we get you involved. And there's plenty of space, you know, time and space and uh, cases for you. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I got to fix a, a little old lady's uh, hip. And as you may or may not know, that hip fractures generally are a, a bit of a, a death knell. And, uh, and so this operation needs to be done really quickly within uh, 36 hours. Uh, otherwise, their rates of death and morbidity uh, rise through the roof. So we are lifesavers to an extent. Uh, and there are 100,000 hip fractures per year in the UK alone. So you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, life saving going on on a daily basis. And then the second reason why I thought, you know what, orthopedics is really cool, is that it has, without dispute, the world's most satisfying operation the total hip replacement so how do we know I, am i just making this up no it's based on our you know, our, our excellent hs um, related outcome measures so how do we know that you know we're doing a good job we get outcome measures and the outcome measures it's a nationally collected thing we don't fill it in the patients fill it in and the hip replacement is the most satisfying operation for the patients and the most uh, life-changing operation for the patients as well. So uh, it's, and guess what? How many do we have per year of those? 100,000 of those as well. And 100,000 knee replacements. Not so many shoulder replacements. That's my favorite operation. I'm a shoulder and elbow surgeon, uh, but you know, it's still really satisfying. And then something quite topical, like all surgical specialties, we've been hit by COVID and the waiting lists have grown massively. And now, at this moment in time, patients are having to wait nearly two years for their operation, for their hip replacement or their, uh, or their knee replacement. And this paper, published in December of 2020, demonstrated that patients find it worse than death waiting for their hip or knee arthroplasty. So you can see why it's such a satisfying job to be able to do. Um, you, you can make patients better. You can see instant results. They weren't work, walking before. They are walking after you've helped them. Uh, and, and you've made them feel better than death which is the ultimate, isn't it, I guess. So that's the reasons why I came into orthopedics. And no, we didn't get a, 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 a joint message. Shadi wasn't sent a joint message by the Cambridge Society, uh, Surgical Society to uh, have a, an um, Avengers uh, theme to this, but clearly we get it. And orthopods are Avengers. Why are we Avengers? Well, because we're, team players so 
I'm going to give you the trauma reasons why uh, um, we are Avengers. So we have lots of teams within orthopedics. Uh, we have the, for example, at Cambridge, uh, we have our orthopedic trauma unit, which deals with all that, that major trauma, all the car crashes, all the uh, falls from a uh, you know, bridge, uh, etc. We have the Cambridge upper limb team, the cult, uh, which I'm a very proud member of. Uh, and that includes the hand surgeons, the shoulder surgeons, it includes the physiotherapists, it includes the hand therapists. So we all work together to make patients better and happier. And then there are other teams as well, the pedi pediatric orthopods. I'm sure Daphne will uh, tell you about all the, uh, the merits of the, the pedipods and how they work with the pediatricians, they work with the uh, physiotherapists as well as the play therapists and they make uh, pa patients and also patients' parents happy. Um, so you know, we have lots of teams. And this is one of the teams that I work with at Cambridge University Hospitals. I'm proud and, and happy enough to be working with this bunch of people here and you can see it's a diverse team we've got uh, the anesthetists the scrub staff the ODPs they're, they're the people who uh, actually are probably the, the rate limiting factor if you don't have an ODP you don't get the operation done um, so uh, you, you'll, you'll learn that uh, the hard way probably um, uh, but we need all of these critical members and we're you know without them we would be nothing and the patients wouldn't uh, would be continuing to suffer. So we have R for research, and that's uh, you know a list of the Cambridge people who are heavily into research. So if some one of the questions for the uh, MaxVax was, oh, hey, you know, what can we be doing for our portfolio? Um, just come and ask us. Uh, Vineet will uh, testify that Graham Tiddley Strong has uh, uh, given him uh, some projects to do and uh, that will enhance his CV and make him competitive for when he comes to his applications for either the FY2, the core training or the ST3 applications. Um, but Mr. Tiddley Strong is uh, just one of many. Um, we all do some form of research, but the, the people I've listed there, they're the, the, the heavyweights uh, and the, the Bruce Banners of the uh, uh, or Cambridge orthopedic research world. And A is for awesome education. Um, some of you may be aware of Cambridge orthopedics and our Zoom channel and our YouTube, YouTube channel. Hopefully you're subscribing. Um, but if uh, you want to uh, know how to do an operation or what, you know, what's uh, how to set it up or you know why we do what we do uh, then we've we've set up a, a channel and also you are most welcome to come and join us on a Thursday or a Friday morning at 7 30 um, and just partake you can listen you can ask questions um, Daphne is a, a a regular visitor and uh, she she always asks questions very sensible questions I may hasten to add and we love that interaction so please you know join in so the uh you from trauma is uh, ultimate we've got some great surgeons um you know Matija Kirkovich he's very innovative and uh, he he builds people back together um lower limb reconstruction with frames and scaffolding there's Jay Rawal and Dao Chow, uh, who are our trauma twins, um, as, a, as they're affectionately known. They, uh, they like to uh, guddle around in pelvises and, and save lives that way. Then there's a couple of the members of the uh, cult, Lee Van Rensburg and uh, the aforementioned Graham Tiddley Strong. Um, they, they're all concentrating on the upper limb. And, and Graham Tiddley Strong, um, was uh, affectionately known by a ra complete random American uh, stranger shoulder surgeon as the arthroscopic assassin because he can get his uh, keyhole surgery into any joint that you want. He's very famous for getting um, his uh, the, the keyhole into the sternoclavicular joint and that's uh, where a lot of his publications come from. And then we've got an awesome hand and 
trainer and educationist, former training program director, Phil Johnston as well, who loves nothing more than teaching. He's head of AOUK. What is AOUK? Well, um, it's something that's accessible for you. So if you want to learn about um, orthopedics, there is a medical student um, section on uh, how to, uh, what a screw is. Vineet, quite <laughs> once again, sorry, Vineet, you, you, you seem to be, you know, my uh, role model uh, for today, but Vineet learned all about a screw and he could probably teach on that AO uh, UK uh, uh, session uh, where you get to play with saw bones and practice. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I'm not sure where they, where they run them, but we're, we're happy um, running these in our cadaveric um, workshop down the road in the Evelyn Surgical Training Center. I've often invited medical students to come and join us at those. And in fact, that reminds me, we do, uh, it's, it's the, unfortunately because of uh, COVID, we can't, we're, we're limited in terms of numbers, but when COVID is over, then you will be more than welcome to come join us in the cadaveric labs again. Oh, just get a little bit of uh, a breather in there. But we are multidisciplinary. We have lots of different um, heroes from different fields. So bone infection, we couldn't be the uh, do what we want to do and do and, and treat our patients without the, the knowledge and skills of Emma Nickerson. She's an infectious disease consultant. And uh, she, because of her, she, we have saved, or she has saved, I should say, five million pounds over three years um, because of her um, expertise in treating bone infection. So you can imagine, remember I said there were 100,000 hip replacements per year, 100,000 um, um, fractured neck femurs that get fixed or replaced, 100,000 knee replacements per year. That's a lot of knee replacements or hip replacement, joint replacements full stop. And if they get infected, that's bad news. You can imagine it. It's not just give them a tablet and the infection will go away. It means that we need lots more surgery, maybe even having to take out the implants and revising them. Um, but most importantly, making sure that they're on the right antibiotics. And Dr. Nickerson, uh, she's the one who, who makes sure that we stay on track. And then I've already mentioned, uh, alluded to the, the high volume of patients, critically ill patients, those fractured neck femurs, they are the sickest patients if we weren't in a university teaching hospital. If we didn't have uh, uh, Papworth across the road, if we didn't have uh, uh, transplant patients, then in any other hospital, the other 192 hospitals around the, the country, um, they are the sickest people uh, in, in the hospital. We have to get them to theatre and because of our colleagues, Dr. Madhavi Bindalacharavu and Dr. Chinga Chalesi, um, we, we save lives and we get those patients back home to their families um, because of them. And if you want projects, actually, maybe we should be contacting Dr. Nickerson, Dr. Bindalacharavu and Chalesi. They've got ideas galore as well for um, projects that you might want uh, to, to present and publish. Then we've got the major trauma service. So that's not just orthopedics, that's your neurosurgeons, your vascular surgeons, and someone's got to coordinate them all. And it just happens that in Cambridge Orthopedics, it's our trauma twins uh, uh, um, of uh, Dao Chow and, and uh, Jay Rawal who seem to be uh, coordinating it. But don't tell the uh, other surgeons that they'll, they'll get upset. Um, and then I've already mentioned there's the cult. Um, I think the name tells it all. You know, we are uh, you know, definitely multidisciplinary and uh, we will uh, try and make everything that you, every interaction that you have as fun as possible and show you the value of working with team, uh, with a team. And then finally, the A from trauma is for allies. Uh, and, you know, uh, we are allies to the, anyone, any comer. <laughs> You, you, whatever your gender, whatever your uh, sexuality, whatever your uh, race, we've got a space for you and a place for you. And uh, you, know, you can make people better. And then, you know, 
we're not you know limited to one body part you can pick and choose any bone pick a bone any bone and uh you can see here again once again there is crossover with the other specialties we are not just in our own silo we are you know we interact with other other specialties so you can get that diversity so trauma crosses over with general surgery plastics neurosurgery max facts as well they often come in and, and will uh, come in for our uh, polytrauma patients um the the uh, thoracic surgeons come and fix rib fractures on our polytrauma patients as well so a lot of crossover there shoulder and elbow uh, so we you know we can do lots of things we don't just do bones in shoulder and elbow we do tendons and soft tissues muscles etc uh, yes uh, Vanit, once sorry once again Vanit, you've seen a few thoughts and, and, and what uh, how we uh, can uh, make people stronger and uh, give them their cosmetic surgery that way hand and wrist that may in, end up being a combined specialty with plastic surgery uh, spine nowadays in fact our orthopedic trained spine surgeons sit in the neurosurgical department in cambridge so a lot of crossover there hip knee probably less crossover foot and ankle yeah uh, the foot and ankle yeah there's a not surgically but with other specialties um diabetes diabetes uh, diabetes medicine and also the uh, chiropodists um, you need to work closely with them and then there's an, another specialty called orthopedic oncology. Um, that's very rare. Um, there's only about one, uh, 200 primary bone tumors per year in the UK. And so you can imagine that needs to be concentrated in a single center. But you do get lots of metastases um, uh, because of the high rate of cancer. What else do we do? Well, we're not just restricted to theatre. There's outpatients, inpatients. Um, the, in America, you you don't necessarily concentrate on one body part. You might do sports medicine, so you can do shoulder arthroscopy, knee arthroscopy, hip arthroscopy, ankle arthroscopy. You can do all the whole lot. Um, um, you can do low limb joint replacement nowadays it's almost becoming day surgery so i do shoulder replacements as day cases and with covid you can imagine um there is a strong push towards doing hip and knee replacements as day surgery cases and it can be done in select patients but that's what's going to happen probably in your your generation when you come and join us and you'll you'll be uh, doing it in the office uh, as they say even spine surgery can be a day surgery, trauma surgery. So lots of the upper limb surgery that Vanit has seen come in and go home the same day. Even the ankle surgery, uh, foot and ankle surgery, they can be brought in and go home the, the same day as well. Uh, oncology is, is not so uh, uh, easily done as day surgery. That's more of a multidisciplinary inpatient. So how have the uh, Avengers evolved in within orthopedics? So you can see we don't just have one type of hammer we have multiple types of hammers um, and uh, we we have our own iron men uh, men iron people who are innovating all the time and uh, you know the the surgery that we do now well, i've just mentioned that um we we can do hip replacements in a day and and that's not necessarily because of innovation with um implants it's maybe because of innovation of techniques of uh, a different approach, the anterior approach, which is muscle sparing, gets people up quicker, uh, is less painful because of pain techniques, uh, you know, uh, giving certain types of anesthetic. So we're always thinking about how to do something new. Uh, one of the latest things uh, that's going around in uh, sports medicine is the nanoscope uh, and that's like a, a tiny venflon of a camera that we can stick into uh, people's joints in an outpatient setting and we can perhaps uh, do uh, procedures in the in the outpatient setting rather than in the valuable resource of in uh, inpatient theaters and 
now more than ever we are you know desperate for training because of covid we we're struggling to to get into theaters um people are unable to do the, uh, the same amount of operations as they were before but we recognize that you need to uh, keep up your skills you need to enhance your skills and so there are a lot of virtual tra uh, reality training programs that have been created now uh, and hopefully um, we will be at the forefront of that and and um, this is actually a nice segue to plug the CTOC meeting, which is the annual kind of regional trainees meeting, which is also attended by the consultants. We have um, previously had medical students attend, present. Um, it's too late to submit to it now, but um, next year, if you've got some, some uh, research that you want to submit to, then you are welcome to it. Um, we, we even had um, a couple of years ago, so many medical students that we had their own separate competition for the uh, the orthopedic uh, section, uh, and and there were competitors coming from UCL all the way from UCL to present at the CTOC event. But CTOC this year is on Friday, April the sixteenth, uh, in the morning, and uh, you are, is free to uh, join. It will be attended. We've got uh, speakers from New York. Her name is. Uh, Yelena Bogdan, and she is a trauma queen. Uh, and she's known on Twitter as Invicta Ortho. She is an educator phenomenon uh, on uh, Twitter. She has um, every day she'll put up a case, um, not from that day, but um, from a different day. And you can learn a lot from just following her uh, and tips and tricks that she, she puts on there. Uh, so she'll be giving us a, 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 an inspirational talk on mentorship within uh, trauma and orthopedics. And then uh, subsequently, there'll be a Canadian speaker from Vancouver, who is actually um, a, an entrepreneur. He has uh, designed this virtual reality training for orthopedics and different uh, spe the sub different subspecialties of orthopedics and so he'll be giving us a special interactive session as well so you will be able to uh, see how virtual reality can help you become an awesome orthopod what else can we do well we can take our skills all around the world you know you don't just have to you know uh, treat patients in cambridge or or in london or the uk we can go anywhere and uh, so some of our trainees have actually um set up a, a trauma hospital in in for example the congo um we did used to go to myanmar um, um but that program has obviously uh, stopped for obvious reasons as, as has most global surgery because of covid but prior to covid um you know we were uh, adam brooks uh, has a global surgery program like many hospitals but primary trauma care you can imagine is a simple uh, thing that we can spread around the world uh, and, and medical students have been with us uh, on these visits and you would be welcome to come and, and join in as well so a summary of orthopedics the world's your oyster um yeah uh, whatever you want to do you can do it and whoever you are you can do it uh, come join us and have fun. We need you. <laughs>